Almost all Ryzen lineups except for the Zen one where AMD used a monolithic design which had a single die that hosted everything including cores, memory controller, IO inside a single package, the successive generations including Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 4 and the latest Zen 5 lineup deploys the chiplet layout. These have dedicated CCDs which host the cores and has a separate chiplet for the input output die. Now irrespective of how AMD organized the CCDs and the IO die on different Ryzen generations we always had a single IO die with a dedicated memory controller that manages the access to the main system RAM. But there seems to be a big shift in how AMD is approaching the die design on the next gen Zen 6 processors. A few months back there was a rumor according to which the Zen 6 CPUs would bring two integrated memory controllers or IMCs but it wasn't until now that we are actually seeing several reports supporting the claim. For instance the leaker Gray tweeted that Zen 6 will have two CCDs and and two IO dies instead of just one, making Zen 6 the first ever lineup to have two dedicated tiles for the IO dies. This goes in line with the rumor that the Zen 6 CPUs will bring two memory controllers since each of the IO dies on the Zen 6 processors will have a dedicated IMC. While we don't know the exact reasons for such an approach, it could be to optimize memory configuration and performance with Zen 6 CPUs. But there is a slight change in how these IMCs will support the DDR5 memory. It is said that each IMC will support just one DIMM per channel, which is different from the traditional design where the Ryzen CPUs would support up to two DIMMs per channel configuration as there exists a single IMC. Now the third supporting report is from Unico's hardware who seems to have received an upgraded version of the MSI B850 series motherboard. This particular model features just two DIMMs and if you check the official website you will see that those are designated with DIMM A1 and DIMM B1 which is also the default on almost all AM5 motherboards with only two slots. Unico apparently got one with a different configuration as his motherboard shows DIMM A2 and DIMM B2. These are usually found on a 4 slot motherboard so it is rare to see such a configuration. According to a report this particular configuration brings more performance and is specially made for Zen 6 CPUs. This indicates that MSI and probably other motherboard manufacturers already know about Zen 6 updated memory controllers. I don't know how exactly this will affect the memory compatibility and performance but usually one DPC configuration helps maintain much better signal integrity and more stability at higher frequencies. Through this approach, it seems that AMD wants to up its memory game to compete with Intel since Intel processors can support a much higher frequency. We have seen multiple times how enthusiasts are able to break 12,000 MTS mark but this is only possible through one DPC configuration. Hence the Zen 6 design is going to be much more capable in supporting higher memory speeds and we already know that this isn't the only thing Zen 6 excels at. According to reliable reports, Zen 6 is the first lineup to bring up to 12 cores on a single CCD, finally breaking the 8 core limit we have on the current AMD Ryzen processors. Now the next major news is about AMD's next gen graphics cards which you might have heard about a handful of times but this particular report shows how much of a performance upgrade these will bring over RDNA 4. We know that AMD didn't really go all in with RDNA 4 and while it had the potential to offer a competitor to the high-end RTX 40 or 50 series cards, it's likely that AMD won't be releasing a more powerful GPU than the RX 9070 XT in the lineup. Still the Radeon RX 9070 XT is one of the best GPUs for 1440p gaming but for 4K you will have to wait for AMD's RDNA 5 or the UDNA lineup which we know from recent reports will target the high end segment as well. Now there isn't much info available on how powerful this next lineup will be but some reports suggest that the next gen high end AMD GPUs will unlock the smooth 4K gaming performance. Kepler who is a well known leaker says that he expects UDNA graphics cards to feature up to 96 compute units. Now take these numbers with a grain of salt because he himself doesn't look confident in this. But nonetheless according to him if AMD goes with 96 compute units we can expect performance between RTX 5080 and RTX 4090. This flagship GPU will reportedly feature 50% more compute units than the RX 9070 XT which has 64 and is competitive to the RTX 5080. 
5070 Ti. To reach the RTX 5080 performance, a 50% increase in the shader count can even push an RDNA 4 GPU to such a level. But if we add the generational uplifts UDNA will bring over RDNA 4, it will be much easier for the RX 10000 series to achieve a nearly RTX 4090 level performance. Now as far as its memory configuration is concerned, it will be bringing a wider 384-bit memory bus which will unlock higher memory capacity and we aren't just talking about a memory size of up to 24GB but possibly up to 36GB if the UDNA GPUs utilize the 3GB GDDR7 memory modules. These memory modules have reportedly started shipping to Nvidia for the RTX 50 Super Series so it's not going to be surprising to see these deployed on the next-gen AMD GPUs. This means even the mid-range and budget segment UDNA graphics cards will have a much higher memory capacity than the current RDNA 4 lineup and here we have a few more configurations Kepler talked about including variants with 256-bit and 128-bit memory buses. These GPUs might include variants with 64 and 32 compute units similar to what we have on the RX 9000 series. Once again this isn't official yet but going by the accuracy of Kepler's leaks we can expect such improvements in the next GPU stack but at the same time it shows that AMD isn't yet there when it comes to competing for the strongest gaming GPU as by the time AMD releases these cards Nvidia will already have even superior options. I could be wrong on this but let me know what you think about it in the comments. I will be coming back soon with more updates and if you haven't subscribed already then I recommend that you follow the channel and I will see you in the next one.